Hello, bonjour, namaste, ni hao, and ohio everybody, what is going on, it is Gail Wright here, and welcome back to the YouTube channel once again, for another Danmachi Battle Chronicle video, and today, we are going to be revisiting the tier list, so that we can update it with the brand new Arrow of Orion units, of course we have Artemis to add, and along with it, the free assist that is Hestia, so of course, if you guys want to enjoy this video, please be sure to leave a like down below, subscribe to the channel for more Danmachi content, and let me know in the comment section down below, below what do you guys think about the tier list that i've created here and of course the positions that i'm going to be placing artemis hestia and the brand new scene cards in along with that we will be checking out the japanese tier list which will be in the links in the description below so you guys can check it out for yourselves and of course at the end of it all let me know do you guys agree with me or the japanese tier list let me know in the comment section down below now Let's start off with the adventurer side we of course have to start off with the adventurer side and we have artemis right here I think she's in, uh, uh, yeah, double S. I'm gonna put her in double S. I think she is in double S. So, the reason why I'm putting her in double S is pure strength. <laughs> it's, it's insane how good she is. And honestly, I really wouldn't have blamed you guys if you guys decided to do the paid banner because she is honestly worth it. Such a good unit. Such a, such a good unit. And honestly, low key. There's a couple of other units I kind of have to push up now, especially on the basis of certain story uh, modes we've done or story boss fights we've done, event ranking, Uncharted Battlefield, and along with it, of course, raid battles. Um, Bell, Lafia, Haruhime. I can't lie, these guys are just so fucking good on any team you put them on. They're so good. Initially, you know, I wanted to put Haruhime and Lafia a little bit down. But, you know, just seeing their value. And remember, because, of course, nowadays, you know, with how much Selas we're getting from, you know, clearing stories on these various difficulties, normal hard and very hard, the raid uh, missions, the uncharted battlefield things we have to do in order to get Selas and so on and so forth, these units are so vital to you getting those Selas that I think they deserve to be in the double S rank. Now, of course, in the future, they will probably come down over time. I've said this many a times. I feel like these units will tend to drop off over a period of time. But right now, I think they deserve to be in this upper tier spot. And Tione, I think we got to put her in S tier, uh, double S as well. Honestly, the value these units... Pro oh, actually, no. I'm going to put Tione back in uh, S. Because the reason why I'm putting Tione in S... And uh, hear me out on this one. A lot of people will say, but she's amazing in Nemesis. She's such a menace. She's good in one game mode. Outside of that, Battle Arena, I feel like you can easily knock her out. Very, very, very easily, to be quite honest. Unless somebody has built her to the whale level, basically. But on average, I feel like I don't fear Tione anymore. I still fear the units above her in double S and triple S, of course. I used her in PvE combat. Not great at all compared to Atarl, who's an amazing defense unit, who's great offensively and defensively in those scenarios. So for me personally, I think Tione will stay in S tier. But Artemis brings in a group of other characters who I think deserve to be in double S just because of how universally good they are. They are so good across the board. Now, I know I've been saying that I'll probably try and create other tier lists as well for, you know, all these different types of game modes. But honestly speaking, if I end up doing that right, first and foremost, it'll take a lot of time and a lot of effort to be able to do that, which unfortunately, because of my IRL job, I don't think I'm going to be able to do it, to be quite honest, and to the degree I would like to do it, of course, right? But second of all, I think that just generally speaking, I still find this general tier list to be a great understanding of which units are good and not good. I'd say anything above A and S tier, are fantastic units to pull. I mean, of course, I think double S and triple S are the units you should be having in your team no matter what. In your box, they should be there. S is where I would say, yes, you need them for certain game modes, and I think they would come in handy in many a scenario. I think, of course, Summarize, like I've been saying, you know, if I didn't have Artemis, I and if I didn't have Summarize, I would be absolutely screw, screwed from the purple perspective. And similarly with other units as well. Tiona, you know, Halloween Ryu with the Earth Element and Summer Lily, Belle, Cassandra, uh, you know, Christmas Riveria as well. So in my personal opinion, I believe that I 
uh, you know, I've done this right. And I think that a general tier list like this, and it's an even distribution will, with the exception of the triple S spot with uh, eyes. I think this is a fair tier list, to be quite honest. I really do think it's absolutely fair. And I've placed them absolutely correctly. You guys can let me know if you agree with me or disagree with me. But I think uh, this is... Uh, as good as I can get it done. And I believe that I am right with the positions of the double S units. I think they're just so good. I mean, you guys have seen it in the previous videos. I think, uh, you know, maybe it's a little bit of recency bias because of how useful they have been. But like, I mean, I come on, man. The fact that Lafia and Harahime are still amazing supports. I told y'all. I told y'all that these two units would be amazing. And honestly, this has made me want other elements to get these two types of units you know i want purple if purple got this sort of like love purple the purple team would be unbelievably good honestly it would be so good you've got artemis summer eyes aisha finn bet who are okay for, to great of course depending on which unit you're looking at they're okay to great but just the sheer addition of a purple support unit will elevate them to another degree. Honestly, they re it really will. It really will. So we need to see more stuff like this for the other elements. Red as well. I mean, Red kind of got it with Riveria. Unfortunately, I couldn't. I didn't pull for her. But Red kind of got it. But I feel like the way Lafia and Harihime are built in terms of their design kind of outclasses Riveria a little bit, in my opinion. Just a little bit. But unbelievable units unbelievable units nonetheless but yeah that's how i feel about the uh, adventure side of things and the tier list for them let me know if you guys agree with me or disagree with me again like i said i obviously I, this is an opinionated video so obviously things are going to be completely different between myself and your guys's uh, tier lists as well so yeah let me know let me know in the comment section down below now we move on to advent uh the assist side sorry not the adventure side i was gonna say adventure side we move on to the assist side which is another easy ish kind of thing to do to be quite honest we're gonna just chuck uh hestia into s tier um one of the best free assists or one of the best assists in the game and you can get her for completely free and you can max awaken her for uh, completely free as well you don't need to go and use that paid pack at all don't do that all right you can literally get her for free entirely if you all you need to do is clear the artemis chapter on hard very hard and then buy the rest of the stuff with the moon medals she is a phenomenal unit, honestly. She's such a good assist. She's able to uh, heal your unit and on top of that, give you electric damage support. Now, that makes her a little bit niche, of course, mainly for electric type units. But honestly speaking, you have three or four electric type uh, adventures that are non-time limited. You have Summer Eyes, you have Summer, uh, you have Summer Eyes and of course, uh, Summer Lafia. You have Artemis as well now. And of course, there will be future units to come as well. So she's going to be a fantastic option as long as they don't release a better version of her, right? I think that's the most important thing. And she also enables so many good scene cards as well, which we'll come on to in just a moment. So for me, I think Hestia deserves to be in the S tier. Um, I think that also on top of that, you have to remember, like I said, she is a completely max awakened unit, which automatically beats out like zero awakening or one awakening units, of course, just based on raw stats, of course, right? So the fact that you get a free unit unit like this easily deserves to be in the s tier and of course at max awakening so yeah there you guys go of course one more thing to note by the way none of this is in order i've just placed them um just loosely into the tier list so keep that in mind this is not ordered whatsoever i keep forgetting to mention that at the start of the video and put a disclaimer out there that you know this isn't ordered or anything but i'm telling you guys right now this is not an ordered tier list this is just me placing characters into that tier and uh you know talking about how good they are or how bad they are basically so yeah Hestia, easy S tier. Unbelievable unit, unbelievable assist. Glad she is completely free as well. So, so good. Makes it so achievable by so many players. And even if you can't do the very hard stage of Artemis, the fact that you can at least get her to A4 very easily is insane. Insane to me personally. And then, of course, if you want to dupe her out for free, Rainbow Bonds are a thing. You don't need to use the paid pack at all. So keep that in mind. Again, 
fantastic assist unit and glad that she's completely free glad that she is completely free now we move on swiftly to the steam card side i don't want to make any changes by the way to the assist side i think for the most part i still maintain a majority of it maybe hermes i could push up a bit higher but again i i, I do agree with a lot of people that i am probably pushing a lot of units into that s tier uh but i just feel like a lot of these assists are just so good eat one after the other they're all amazing amazing assists so i can't really you know push one low push one higher or you know split them up even more add more tiers i think they're all um, amazing equally to be quite honest obviously some people will prefer say for example hestia over this hestia or gareth over freya but i feel like each of them have their own use in every scenario and uh that makes them super viable no matter what so i think that is the reason why i'm gonna keep it like this where s is just dominated by a bunch of assists now in the future again like i said for the adventurer side or even the uh, brand new hestia if there is a replacement then we will bring them down slowly but surely but for now they stay where they are they stay where they are Scene card time now, and this is where things get interesting. So we, the two new scene cards that we got are quite strict, right? They're very strict scene cards. One requires you to be at 70% HP, which is not as bad as some of the other scene cards in this list, right? like uh, the Eyes one, like the Seer one and stuff. But the other scene card requires you to be at 100%, which is insane to me. Now, the thing is, right, the buffs that you get from the 100% HP scene card, and we'll tackle that one first, because it is, of course, the more controversial, the more difficult one to proc. I think if you are at 100%, it's fantastic. However, even with the new Hestia healing, even with Artemis having the heals in her kit, the problem is, is that this scene card is going to be in future gacha banners. And if you start after the banners leave, right? And of course, or you didn't pull uh, Artemis. And if you pulled Hestia, but don't use Hestia because you don't have electric type units or you're using another team which doesn't have heals, you're going to not be able to proc this ability, right? You're not going to be able to proc this whatsoever. That being said, though, when you can proc it skills, like I said, in maybe boss fights where you're dodging really well, um, where you have a healer like Haruhime potentially, or you have a battle item that allows you to heal, sort of like the final medicine that you get from uh, Uncharted Battlefield or even the uh, Haruhime's lunchbox, I think that makes the scene card an A tier scene card at the very least. I think, yes, I know I've been uh, a bit harsh with some of these other scene cards, and honestly, I don't mind pushing up some of them a little higher now that we've had, we've got more reliable healers and stuff. But I feel like the stats bonus you get from this is far superior compared to these ones. So I'm going to keep them in B. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do this, actually. I'm going to remove uh, the D tier row for now. And I'm just going to keep all of these scene cards in the B tier. I feel like that's a bit fair. Um, this is still in, it's a, a, in a tier of its own because it requires you to be under 30% HP. Which, I mean, come on. Like, you have a healer, yeah. But you're going to heal up beyond 30% HP. You don't have any unit that will bring you down to 30 percent hp to proc the uh, strength bonus for this ice scene card such a dumb scene card by the way such a dumb scene card so useless so so useless the crit one i think i'm gonna put in a tier as well i feel 70 percent hp or higher for crit rate is not bad at all and you get a decent amount of crit rate as well so if you have like for example you're running something like this halloween seer and maybe some other dexterity based unit potentially a speed unit like halloween Ryu or something chuck in this scene card as well get some healers going as well and you will be in a very very good position in my opinion i think that'll be something to take note of and uh something to uh, you know uh definitely consider in the future if you do get one of these scene cards i don't have this scene card i have this scene card and yeah i i feel like the conditions for this isn't as bad as I thought it was, but it's still very specific and you can only really use it with specific units and team compositions. Uh, another thing to actually note as well is that if you are on mobile, which is obviously a bit more clunky compared to PC gameplay, that is another reason why I don't feel so comfortable with any of these HP based scene cards because of course, you don't know how you're going to get hit and when you're going to get hit. So obviously something to bear in mind is that you have to be a bit cautious when you're running a scene card like this on mobile devices, of course, right? So keep that in mind, of course. Keep that in mind. Now, we move on to the JP tier list. And this is where things will get interesting. So 
we're on the assist side and i want to start off with hestia which they have placed in s tier which i mean this is pretty much straightforward they're putting almost every assist in s tier outside of three or four assists which i personally disagree with i think summer loki and Ch chigusa are better than some of the uh, some of the assists in here to be honest but outside of that very much straightforward they've got everybody on par basically um i mean let's take a look at what they say release divine power after recovering her own hp has stick and strengthen lightning based units even the passive skill increases the lightning attribute when hp is over 50 percent so it is an assist that is compatible with lightning adventurers who can maintain high hp so of course artemis in this situation so makes sense very strong assist we kind of expected that to be the case i expected them to put them in uh, s tier it wasn't going to be double s because it's not universal it's only focused on lightning adventures right so that makes sense now strongest adventures now this one i feel is pretty simple uh double s yeah i was expecting it this is what i was expecting uh let's see what they have to say about artemis here um Overall, easy to handle attack motion. Artemis' technique one is a straight mid-range attack where she steps forward and then returns to the original position after the attack. Her technique two is a straight long-range attack, which is a snipe basically. And then skill one also has two charges as well, which is fantastic as well. Um, I think, yeah, like they said, that she can be really easy to use. Uh, you know, the normal attacks are good range as well. So you can go at a distance as well. You don't need to be close range as well. Makes her a very strong unit as well. So yeah, I mean, I agree with all of this. This makes sense. And the ranking also makes sense. I mean, if we take a look at the double S here, you have Green Eyes, Summer Lily, Otaro, Christmas Eyes, and Artemis as well. I personally placed... Uh, yeah, they finally moved this guy up, by the way. They had put him in A. Um, and they put uh, Support Lafia in A, which I fucking disagree with entirely. I honestly disagree with it. But... That is how it is. It's just how it is. That's such a shambles of a position they've put him in. But it is what it is. Let's have a thousand, ten thousand years of love. This is the 100% HP scene card. I am quite curious to see where they rank this one. S tier, a little too high in my opinion. Because I feel like, again, it's so restricted. Um, yeah, like they say here. You know, you have to uh, be very cautious. You have to receive, uh, not receive any attacks or support with recovery and shield. I think it's just too restricted um and it becomes a bit of a struggle there please orion which is of course hp crit rate is s tier as well wow i want to see their stream uh, scene card tier list properly in full length I, I don't know if i'd place it along with some of these scene cards i'm not gonna lie i'd probably put it down here man i put it down in a tier both of them to be quite honest both of them but um okay okay i'm very surprised about them placing it so high up y'all can let me know what you guys think about that now um but yeah Fair enough. S tier for both. Interesting. Okay. I mean, I want to see what they say about the crit rate one. One second. I want to just see what they say about the crit rate one. Orion has the effect uh, about uh, increasing crit rate by 30% when HP is over 70%. And although there are conditions, it is a scene card that can greatly increase firepower. Uh, okay. I mean, I mean, okay. I mean, you're they are saying itself that there are conditions, which... I feel are a little bit harsh as well still. I mean, 70% is a lot better than like 80% and stuff, but still, it is what it is. I mean, I, maybe, maybe I'm underestimating it. Maybe I'm underestimating it. Y'all can let me know. Y'all can let me know in the comment section down below because that is it for this video. Let me know what you guys think. Again, I think I've done the right thing by placing Artemis in double S, um, placing Hestia in S, and uh, obviously the uh, scene cards in A. Y'all can agree with me or disagree with me in the comment section down below. I'm curious to see what you guys have to say. Um, of course, if you guys enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like down below, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys in the next one. Until then, take it easy, everybody. Bye-bye.